Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are celebrating Toxgiving. Uh, last year in 2019, I did a video where we talked about Toxin and one of his miniseries, and it was pretty terrible. And uh, coincidentally, the very next Flash story is about Toxin, although this time it's about Eddie Brock Toxin and not about um, you know Patrick Mulligan Toxin. Uh, so uh, so anyway, I wanted to do that this year. I was like, hey, that worked out. You know, I was gonna do. Uh, another episode like Empire's End or Symbiote Spider-Man. I was going to do something else before we got to this story. But then I woke up this morning, which is Thanksgiving now. So happy Thanksgiving. And I was like, wait, last year we did Toxin and the next Flash story is Toxin. So let's just talk about that today since I've already read it and, you know, and I can kind of talk about it. So that is, again, from this uh, collection here, the Cullen Bunn Complete Collection of Venom Stories. And this has a lot in it. This is what we've been going through for the past, like, you know, week and a half now. Uh, it has issues 23 through 42 in it. It also has uh, issue 27.1 in it, which we discussed, which I really liked. Um, and then also Minimum Carnage, the whole miniseries, which involves uh, Minimum Carnage Alpha and Omega. And also the two Scarlet Spider issues that cross over with that. Again, we're going to talk about that next season. So if you're like, hey, I missed an episode. You didn't miss an episode. Minimum Carnage we'll talk about next season when we do another Carnage Week. I figured, well, you know, we were going to do it this season, obviously, because the movie was going to come out. But since it's not coming out till next year, uh, you know, we'll just do it next season. We'll talk about Carnage again next season. So we'll go through Minimum Carnage, Superior Carnage, and then we'll get into the, the Jerry Conway Carnage series, which lasted, I think, three or four volumes, something like that. So we'll get into all that next season with Carnage Week. So for now, we're going to dive back in. Uh, we're going to pick up issue 31, and uh, that's this one here called Day One. And after the last story where we, you know, got Eddie Brock is returned and he's like killing people again, killed some criminals, and now he's killing cops who like, you know, invaded in, I guess. Um, so now he's on the loose looking for you know, Flash Thompson, and he's looking around New York for him. But obviously Flash is going to be heading to Philadelphia, which is what, that's what this story is. After the last battle with the UFOs and teaming up with Valkyrie and uh, and Katie Kiernan and saving her, he's like, I need a new, I need escape. I, I need to get away. I need to move to a city where I don't know anybody. And he actually does use that contact with AJ to help him get a job as a, a PE coach, as a physical education coach at a high school. And, uh, and then at, you know, when he moves into this apartment, there's you know, his neighbor is like this loud drunk guy that lives next door that starts yelling at him, doesn't care that Flash is in a wheelchair, doesn't have any sympathy for him and just starts yelling at Flash, uh, you know, and of course the e Flash even has a moment with the movers because the movers are like, hey, do you have someone who's going to help you like unload all this stuff? You know, and they're just trying to be nice. They're not saying like, hey, you can't do it because you don't have legs. They're just trying to be nice. And Flash is, like snaps at the guy. And then he even admits, he's like, I shouldn't have snapped at him. I'm just, you know, I'm high stress right now. And now I have a, a demon in me and a symbiote in me. And I just moved to a city where I don't know anybody. And yeah, technically no one can come help me uh, unload all this. But, you know, I have a symbiote, so I'm sure I'll get to it at some point. We can, you know, figure it out. Uh, and then, uh, and he, you know, he's kind of like, and I, I kind of want to call Valkyrie, but I don't at the same time. And he even has a nice conversation, though, with Hank McCoy, which I really liked, where he, you know, he calls up Hank and he's like, hey, thanks for giving me the suit. So I guess at this point, you know, Flash is no longer a secret Avenger and neither is Hank McCoy. And I guess because they disbanded, you know, and a lot of this happens off screen. I'm just guessing, you know, off panel and stuff. So I'm just guessing this. But maybe if you guys have a book that you can reference to me that maybe I'm missing. Um, but I guess the Secret Avengers are gone now. Uh, maybe it's in that annual. So maybe I'll have to go back and read that annual. You guys let me know. Um, I remember flipping through the annual and not really seeing anything like this, but I could, I could have been mistaken. But I guess the Secret Avengers disbanded, and so Flash just now has the suit on him at all times. And uh, and then he, you know, Hank McCoy has, you know, given him the serum. So you know, Flash has to take these syringes into himself to keep the symbiote dormant. And that's kind of what's going on is that he's not really taking the shots. Uh, he's like, you know what? I'll I'll do it later. I'll do it at this time. I'll do it at that time. And uh, and he's pushing it off, and that's allowing the suit to kind of emerge a little bit which i kind of dig you know it's 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 kind of having a personality a very small amount uh creeping up in this one but then also it's a setup to a payoff later because flash ends up using the serum um on toxin so we'll get to that point but so as he's meeting his new neighbors one of them is andy benton uh, our friend andy who is a uh, 17 year old high school girl i think at this point and we don't know who she lives with or what her living situation is she just lives in flash's building and, uh, and, you know, she tries to, you know, be nice to him because, you know, he seems like a, 
he's in a wheelchair so she's kind of having some sympathy but then when he's like being nice back she's kind of like yeah whatever dude you know have have a good day um turns out he turns out to be her pe coach and she hangs out with like um kind of outsider kind of kids goth kids so they don't really dress up in their pe outfits and she's kind of like yeah pe is my first class of the day and i don't want to run around getting all sweaty and nasty and ruin my makeup or whatever like she's kind of like i'm not into this and Flash is like, huh, that's a good point, I guess. <laughs> and then uh, meanwhile, there's other kids in the class, including a jock kid who kind of is actually pokes fun at Flash uh, for not having legs. And he's like, who, what are you going to teach us? Like, you, you can't even run around the, the, you know, the court here in basketball. And so Flash is like, oh, man, like talk about karma. He's like, I have to now teach me <laughs> he's like uh there's a jerk kid here who's a bully like i was um so i kind of liked all that stuff i gotta be honest with you this book i thought i was gonna hate a lot more some of you including one of my good friends gene he does not like the colin bunn run of venom at all from of what he read of, read of it and he admitted he didn't read the whole run but he did say like what he read he did not like he found it boring and i saw a couple other people saying uh, in the comments that they weren't really a fond of this run but i also saw people that said they really liked this run but i was like worried i was like oh man i don't think i'm gonna like this so after i read 27.1 i was like i'm pretty sure the book's gonna be downhill from here but this isn't bad like actually this is pretty good stuff and i don't love colin bunn's writing in a lot of cases because sometimes he's just good for like mindless fun stories like the War of the Realms Venom story or the UFO story that we just talked about. Um, but this is actually pretty good. There's a little bit of heart to this and um, it's a little bit about Flash moving on and you could see more of his family life. Like he's, you know, called or goes to see his mom and says goodbye to her. And he's like, hey, look, I'm moving to Philadelphia. I'm sorry, but this is not me abandoning you. If you ever need me for anything, I will be here. I promise. I just figure you might need some space and that's why you checked yourself into this place and I don't want to be the cause of any more of your problems and obviously she's you know has night terrors and you know and PTSD over Venom and stuff and seeing what he did to like the human fly and everything so she you know so he takes that personally because obviously he is Agent Venom though she doesn't know that his mom doesn't know that but he's like I'm going to just distance myself from you to kind of protect you from the monster that you're scared of um, and the thing that gives you nightmares. So he's like, I'm going to go to Philadelphia where I know nobody. Um, there's even a great moment where he has a, a like a one last hangout with uh, Peter Parker where uh, they go to the movies together. And uh, I, I liked all this stuff. I mean, honestly, like here's the stuff with Peter. Um, I thought it was good. And I, I know what it's like to move to a place. Heck, we just moved to Florida here where I knew like a couple people. Um, and Flash, when he moves here, he's like, oh, I kind of know Katie Kiernan, even though she's like at the Inquisitor um, and she's not really here here. But he's like, you know, I'll figure it out. And and but it's a big step, you know, in your life to take a move. And a lot of people are doing that right now in this country with, you know, uh, you know, unemployment rates going up and all these things, you know, uh, you know, and I'm just saying that to put a time capsule on this so people who are watching this years later you understand that right now we're going through a really tough time economically in our country in the united states and uh and, you know and it's it's hurting a lot of people a lot of people are making moves i even met a guy last night when i was working at lego who was telling me that he had to move to kentucky that he used to live here in orlando and he had to move to kentucky but um disney allowed people who work for them to continue to get their discounts, their employee discounts um, up until the end of the year. So, you know, even though he's in Kentucky, they took a family vacation down just to get Christmas presents and, and get, you know, use his discount one last time. And then also, you know, see Florida one more time before the end of the year. And I felt for the guy, I was like, yeah, man, I moved across the entire United States uh, for, well, for health reasons, obviously too, but, um, but, you know, also, I just wasn't happy with where I was at work and then work ended up going away uh, for the most part anyway. So I was like, all right, well, this just, you know, it's, it's all signs are pointing to me having to move. And it uh, looks like I got out of California at uh, an earlier time than what the struggles are going through now, which they just went through another shutdown, which is just heartbreaking for me, uh, knowing that my friends are going through that stuff. So anyway, side rant, you know, over, but I just, this, I resonated with this, I guess. And I, and I see parallels to a lot of stuff that's happening right now. So Flash made this scary move and he's kind of alone, although he has a symbiote and he's trying to communicate with it more and talk to it a little bit more. And it's he's sitting there with, deciding whether he's gonna take the syringe or not. Um, Flash is, you know, doing the best he can. And he's like, well, I can't move to Philadelphia and as Flash Thompson and start working for the school and Agent Venom show up in this city that doesn't really have any superheroes my friends are you know like peter parker's a rocket scientist kind of like he not really but he's like he's a super smart guy 
they're going to figure out or connect some dots. He's like, I can't make it that obvious. So when he's running around as Venom, he's actually disguising himself as like uh, this like witch woman. He's like doing these fun tricks where he's shape-shifting the suit and he's using the powers of the suit. And he's like, he's running around as Hail Mary and he's got these chains on him. And he's like, I will eat your souls or whatever. <laughs> and he's like doing it to scare uh, criminals so that they don't, you know, so he's not Venom in this city right now. And I kind of like that. I actually, I was like, that's kind of clever too. Um, so I was really surprised that I wasn't, um, bummed out by this run this this single issue here with day one where where flash is like figuring out what's going on it does end with some mystery and a little bit of scariness um that neighbor that was really rude to him at the beginning flash wakes up uh, he had a knock at his door and the police are there and he looks around and all of his boxes have been put away and i this reminds me of the early days of peter parker when he had the black suit and the suit was you know uh kind of taking peter out for a joyride or it was doing things while he was sleeping this kind of reminded me of that. So clearly the suit is waking up and also probably the demon that's attached to it now is also waking up uh, because the suit might have separated the boxes and cleaned everything and organized this stuff uh, while he was sleeping. But the demon, it seems, may have gone across the hall and butchered uh, his neighbor that was really rude to him. So, uh, and that's what the police are there for. They're like, hey, did you hear any disturbance? You live, you know, across the hall. We thought maybe you heard something. He's like, apparently not. I sleep through hurricanes. You know, I'm sorry, like... Uh, uh, you know, I'm from New York, so we, we I sleep through a lot. He goes, what happened? And I'm like, oh, this guy was murdered. So Flash is like, oh, crap, did I do that? So it's the end of his first day, and he's already, like, worried that, you know, that the suit is, he's losing control of it. Uh, so that's when he's like, oh, I really should probably take that syringe now. Meanwhile, Eddie Brock is in New York, and he shows up at Flash's apartment, and a neighbor is like, hey, if you're looking for Flash, he just left. And, and Eddie's like, oh, man, he left without saying goodbye to his old pal Eddie. So I kind of like that too, because that was kind of reminiscent of the cartoon, you know, uh, when when Eddie would like say like, hey, Peter, it's your pal, Eddie Brock, you know, like we're old friends or whatever, uh, when he showed up to Aunt May's doorstep. It kind of reminded me of little things like that. So I, I didn't hate it. I was like really sitting there going, man, I did not like anything that Remender did with Eddie. And now that, you know, we're getting that with Eddie as Toxin again, and Colin Bunn's writing it, I'm just like, I'm not looking forward to this. But it seems like Cullen Bunn has a little bit more love for Eddie than Remender does. Because in this arc, he actually tries, he adds a little bit of Eddie to this, this version of Eddie that I don't like. He adds a little bit of the old Eddie to it. And I, I, I appreciate that. It's still not great. I still don't like everything he does in here with Eddie and the toxin suit. But it, I do like how it wraps up. So we'll get there here in a second. So anyway, we're set up all the pieces now. Um... Flash is going on about his life. He's, you know, now in the cities in Philadelphia. He's being a teacher. Um, and then, uh, you know, that's when, uh, as he goes out on his nightly patrol, he runs into this, like, kind of this freak, this guy who has been mutated by the UFOs. So this does tie into the previous story. And this is one of the victims that got away. And he has these jars drilled into his back. And in each of the jars are these mechanical monster things that feed off of human flesh. So this guy has to eat people and he captured some kids and some other people and he has to feed. And he keeps saying like, I'm sorry, I don't wanna do this, but I have to. And so since, you know, Flash has been shown up in town, he has seen there's been missing people going around and now he's been tracking that story and finds this guy. And so he shows up and saves the kids at the last minute before this guy's able to eat them. And I like this too. There's some tragedy here. And this guy talks about how uh, the UFOs experimented on him and put this uh, this creature inside of him. Because remember, they were creating these things and each device birthed something that, you know, they didn't know what it was going to birth. So this time it was like a, a mind controlling uh, robot thing that looks like one of those um, uh, sentinels from uh, the Matrix movie, the, the spidery things that run around. And they, but they're smaller, you know, they're like maybe handheld size. And, uh, and they put four of them into this guy's back and, uh, you know, because that's what the machine produced and they operated on him and put them in there. And now this poor guy is being taken over by these robot creatures that extend his arms and, you know, his jaw and make him more monstrous. And he has to eat human flesh to uh, sustain himself um, or sustain the, 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 the monsters so that these are almost like symbiotes, but mechanical. So Flash sympathize for the guy. He's like, hey, I know what it's like to lose control too. And, and I know what it's like you have to feed. That's what this suit does too sometimes. So Flash sees a, a kindredness in, in this character. And I, I like that too. That added some emotion to it. This had a lot more... Now I'm not saying this is a, a 
fantastic, great story. There's still stuff in here I wasn't like a super fan of, you know, especially with Eddie and other things. But I gotta say, like, there's there's stuff here. There's there's uh, there's meat to this, and I wasn't expecting that. I think from some of the negative comments I heard, I wasn't expecting that. But what the last half of this story kind of shows us is that it's pretty much just a battle from here on out. The freak guy, uh, you know, he ran into Venom, and now Toxin is here in Philadelphia. He took a uh, like a truck, like a pickup truck, picked him up. He was like hitchhiking, and uh, and he takes the truck into town and comes to Philadelphia and uh, runs into the freak creature. And uh, that's when he's like, all right, I, I can smell venom all over you. So I'm gonna take you down and then we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna go look for venom and follow his trail. So that's pretty much what the rest of this book is. Cause I kind of, you know, did an overview of everything already. The rest of this book is just a battle. It's like a three-way battle. You get venom. Uh, first you get toxin versus this guy. So Eddie Brock now as toxin is like ready to rip this guy apart. Um, he beats him up pretty good, but then leaves him, you know, for, to go, follow as bait he's like all right i'm gonna leave him now uh now that he's on his ro on the against the ropes uh you know venom will come out and look for him and then i'm gonna you know corner venom and i'll have you know have my bait and then i have my prey um but yeah so toxin does beat this guy up pretty good but then the guy uses his tentacles like his robot tentacles to pierce through eddie brock's chest and almost kills eddie uh so eddie has to sit there and heal and he's like heal suit heal uh and so finally it does so there's some communication going on between Eddie and Toxin, um, although, uh, you know, it's not, like, we can't see it. It's not verbal, like, on the page, like, with captions or, or you know, anything like that. It doesn't have any of those. Um, but then here's that great scene with Hank McCoy and Eddie, or, and Flash, sorry, uh, Flash and Hank McCoy, and uh, Flash says, um, you know, yeah, don't worry, I'm taking my serum, my shots. He's not really, uh, a, a Flash is going to AA, he's going to Alcoholics Anonymous, and he does, you know, meet some people there, and he's, like, talking to them there, uh, you know, uh, confessing his stuff, but I like it, because while he's confessing, you have his inner monologue, where he's kind of talking almost like the symbiote, um, so again, there is a slow build here towards the symbiote maybe getting a voice again, and maybe actually liking Flash, um, and then, but being corrupted by this demon, like, there's a lot of that in here, I, just, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm reading a little too much into it right now, but I find it pretty fascinating and pretty well done. Um, and then it gets dark again. Like we get a scene where uh, the freak guy is eating a dog and he's eating a bunch of animals. He's at like a pet, like a pound or something and he's eating animals and he's then he's like, it's not enough. I need a human. And then this woman caretaker person shows up and he goes after her. But the bait has been set uh, by Venom by letting this guy walk away and feed now or by by toxin i should say um so now venom has shown up and now that venom is here to fight this guy toxin is there to get his prey so again more of a three-way battle pretty much for the rest of the book um issue 34 family bonding that's pretty much what this issue is it's the two of them going at it and you even have toxin calling venom granddad which is very reminiscent of carnage when he used to call um, you know venom dad so there's a little bit that I liked in that, uh, in some regard, um, but also like, I don't know, I feel like the toxin suit was talked up to be this big, important thing, the 1,000th, you know, whatever, uh, symbiote in the bloodline or whatever it was, um, and it doesn't really seem to be that awesome <laughs> of a suit, and Eddie uh, seems to not really be good, that good at using it. He is definitely more powerful than Venom, and Venom even says that he's like, yeah, I'm kind of neutered right now with the suit and stuff. He's like, so this thing is more powerful than me. Um, so Venom does get his butt kicked through most of this, but he does get some good shots in. But considering how uh, Eddie was beaten but kind of or wounded uh, severely by the freak kind of guy. Um, and I keep saying freak because he kind of reminds me of freak a little bit from Spawn. Although he's not like, he's not hunt, like the freak from Spawn isn't hunched over. He's just kind of tall and lanky. And that's kind of, so I was kind of thinking of that. Um, but he looks different. He's got those pipes in his back, which are, which are interesting. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's just like a three-way battle. And then pretty much gets to the point where uh, Flash does kind of get the upper hand on uh, on Toxin, but only because he takes that serum out. Because like right here, almost like the Venom movie, he uh, like when Riot stabs Venom in the movie, it's Toxin uh, stabbing through Flash and, uh, and pretty much nearly kills him. And Flash is like, you know, please heal, please heal. But now that he's close, he uses the symbiote to pull out the syringe and he injects it into Toxin. So uh, that stuff that Hank McCoy keeps telling, you know, Flash to use, he injects it into Eddie, and now the suit is slipping away from Eddie. 
and Eddie's like reverting back to human form and he can't access the suit because the drug gets so powerful and it's the first time Eddie's taking it and the first time Toxin's dealing with it so it regresses. And so uh, Eddie's like, dang it, he's like, I can't finish you. And he, he easily could maybe, um, you know, because, you know, he's crawling away, Flash is crawling away and he's bleeding severely. And I'm like, wait a minute, didn't Eddie kill two symbiotes, like Hybrid and Scream? with just like hot knives and stuff. Like he didn't even have a symbiote at the time. So why is he still not attacking here? So maybe the drug is affecting Eddie's mind a little bit. I don't know. Cause I'm like, even without the suit, Eddie has already been painted as a formidable foe, but he's not using, he's just like, oh, I'm nothing without the suit. I'm going to go away now. So I found that a little too convenient unless the drug's affecting Eddie too, which is possible. Um, but then there's this great scene where Andy's on her rooftop and she finds Flash uh, who's crawling around on the roof and he look, clearly looks like he got the crap kicked out of him. And she's like, let me help you. Oh my God, who did this to you? Did someone beat you up? Did someone bring you up here? And he's like, no, just leave me alone. You know, don't, you know, get away from me. And she's like, fine, whatever. If you don't want my help, I'll go away. So then Andy kind of just takes off and goes back to her apartment. And then meanwhile, um, the, the freak guy, he was killed by uh, Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock bites his head off and, and kills him completely. So you're like, wait a minute, he's dead? What's going on? Well, those little bugs that were attached to his back, now they're free and they go off and they find four other hosts and they create a group of four bad guys that are going to now, you know, track down the symbiotes and kill them. And so that's the final issue we're going to talk about is Night of the Symbiote Slayers, which is a great nod to the Spider Slayers from the Spider-Man series. Um, and the book starts off with Flash, you know, bruised up. He's at school, you know, he's a teacher obviously now. And as he's rolling through the school on his wheelchair, uh, Eddie shows up. And they have this conversation. And this is where I feel like, uh, you know, you have an Eddie that still doesn't feel like Eddie, but Cullen is trying to add, Ellie, you know, Eddie elements to him. So he does show up and he says, look, we're going to, you know, we're ready to kill you now. And, and, and Flash, like right here in this school in front of all these kids, he's like, come on, Eddie, like you're, you can't be that far gone to where, you know, you think this is a good idea where you're just going to hurt me and, and, and scar all these kids. And so Eddie goes, fine, we'll find a place outside of the school and that's secluded and we'll finish this there. Unless you piss me off, then I'm, I can't control the suit that well. We will come after you uh, right here in front of everybody. So I like that there's a little bit like it, Colin tried, it seemed like, you know, even if it feels a little forced at times, he's at least trying to be like, all right, this is not a far gone Eddie crazy psychopath the way that uh, Remender was writing him. There's still a little bit of Eddie in there. There's some humanity. And I like that a little bit. And in fact, uh, when they do get attacked, there is a fight in the school, but it's not between Toxin and, and Venom so much, or talk, you know, Eddie and Flash. The uh, symbiote slayer creature guys, the freaks show up. And there's four of them, like I said, because those four jars got busted open and they went out and inhabited four other, I think, homeless people. Uh, so having the homeless element was even neat, even though it's very subtle, um, I, that always tied into Eddie Brock and Lethal Protector. So having homeless people infected was something that I was like, oh, that adds a little bit to the, you know, the kind of the idea of Venom and these themes you always have in there. Homeless characters, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's, it's neat that they did that. Um, so Flash and Eddie are like, all right, let's get the kids to safety and pretty much we got to team up. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I wasn't expecting this. I really was not expecting this. Um, and even Eddie says, he's like, uh, you know, because Flash's like, what are you going to do after you kill me? Then what? You kill me, you kill the symbiote. Don't you hate symbiotes? You're you're holier than thou now. You're a freak. You know, like as far as that goes, like you're, you're a devout, you know, religious guy. You think you're on some mission. Um, and Eddie's like kind of sitting there taking it. And then Eddie's like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your suit. And then uh, and Toxin and I agree that after that's done, then it and I will get into a fight and we will see who wins. And uh, and so so we have an agreement that we'll team up for now to kill you and, and make us the last symbiotes on Earth. And then we will, you know, kill each other. Um, and I kind of was like, eh, that feels a little dumb and forced and I don't really like that. But if it means that there's some kind of logic to Eddie's actions in this, Okay, I may not agree with it, but at least there's something there, whereas the Remender stuff just felt like, oh, let's just make Eddie a bad guy again, and that's kind of how that felt and kind of dismissed Eddie. This feels like Cullen, you know, because I've read Venomverse and, and those stories, Cullen seems to like Eddie as a character. <laughs> you know, he had him team up with the X-Men, the young X-Men at one, at one point. He seems to have a, you know, a, a kind of a appreciation and love for the character, and he likes to write fun stories with Eddie. So I appreciate that. I like that it's just not all doom or gloom. So they do team up. And they do fight all the creatures together and uh, and then beat them. And in the end, uh, after they beat the living crap 
out of the the creatures they do turn on each other and venom at this point has lost control you know and that's when uh eddie says look we're done here like fine i'm not going to kill you today we saved all these kids we saved the school we did a good thing here but one day just like you did today you lost a little control a little bit you will lose control again and when that day comes i am going to come and take you out i'm going to come kill you and so Flash is like, okay, like if that's the deal, then that's the deal. So they almost make a Spider-Man Venom deal here, uh, which I kind of liked. I was like, wow, that reminds me of the time that Venom and Spider-Man made the deal before Lethal Protector in Amazing Spider-Man 375. And then Venom had to go off, you know, and do his own thing in San Francisco. That Eddie's kind of doing that here. He's like, fine, I'll let you stay here in Philadelphia. I'll go back to New York or whatever. But if you ever lose control again, I'm coming after you. Like if you lose control where you actually kill and hurt people. And Flash's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try my best to not do that. And he's like, I hope you're right. And I'm like, okay, even though it's a little forced and I don't really like some of the elements, I like that Cullen Bunn really tried. He really did try to make Eddie not so far gone, at least to me. I appreciate that. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments below. You know, if you disagree, that's fine. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have a different opinion of me than this story, I don't think it's a, like a perfect or great story, but it is definitely not a mass story for me. I, there was enough in here that I liked. There was a little bit of heart into it. And there's also a moment where Andy starts to put some dots together where, you know, Flash is being interviewed by the news crew and they're like, what happened here? And he's, well, we think we saw carnage or some kind of venom or something like a red and black one. And he's like, yep, that's what I saw, a red and black one. He was acting alone and he was like attacking the school and then these creatures showed up and there was a big fight and that's all I know. Um, and so he basically told the news, he didn't tell them about Agent Venom. He didn't say, you know, that he, you know, that there was another symbiote character there because obviously he's trying to not make people connect the dots that Agent Venom showed up in the same town he did at the same time. So he's doing that and he's lying to the cameras, but Andy knows he's lying because out of all the students that went hiding and stuff, she actually saw Agent Venom in action. So she's like, kind of like, why is he lying to the news crew about, you know, Venom being out there, about this, that, this, the other one, you know, not the Toxin one. Um, so while that's happening, you know, you get these cool voiceover at the end where Toxin kind of standing out on a field. I love that image where he's just kind of standing there, you know, and, and you know, as like a brooding uh, vision of like, okay, one day that guy's going to come back for me if I lose control. So I got to do whatever I can to not lose control. And meanwhile, while, you know, he's saying that one of those little creatures survived and it crawls by in the streets uh, to, you know, potentially set up a future story. So yeah, there we go. Uh, this, this five issues was actually pretty good. I kind of liked it. I got to say, um, uh, I was a bigger fan of it than I thought it was going to be. I, I think I listened a lot to the negativity and that kind of weighed in my head. And my friend Gene, he and I are not always on the same page, but sometimes are. So I thought, oh, wow, he really uh, was like, telling me, he didn't spoil anything, but he was telling me I was you know, he didn't really like uh, from issue 31 onward uh, from the book. And I got to say, man, I, I have a different opinion. I kind of like this book. I, I kind of like this run. I, I didn't hate it. I was dreading. I was like, oh my God, it's going to be Eddie Toxin. I really am dreading this. Some things in here I definitely didn't like with Eddie and kind of his, you know, some of his motivation and kind of, you know, you know, him still being on that path of killing all the symbiotes or whatever. But at least some of Eddie survived, the old Eddie. And there's a little bit of him here. And they made a deal at the end like Spider-Man and Venom did way back when in Amazing 375. And that was nice to see, too. I, although it felt a little forced, this story could have probably benefited from at least one more issue to kind of flesh a few things out. Um, it still worked for me. So uh, so I liked I liked it. And I want to know what you think. If you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. And we'll definitely come back. There's The next story starts here called Simple with issue 36. And it uh, leads into a story called Kindred Spirits. That'll bring us up to issue like 36 to like 39, I think it is. So we'll talk about those issues in a future episode coming up. And then also we'll conclude this. So we only have two episodes left of this trade paperback. Um, and then we're going to conclude it with the Mania storyline. So I guess Andy is finally going to become Mania a couple issues from now. So we'll get into all that coming up. Uh, two episodes left before we get finished the Flash Thompson run. And then we'll probably do the Thunderbolts uh, run. Like five, there's five volumes. We'll probably do that in one hour long episode. So I'll probably do that maybe next week or the week after, and we'll cover all that in one episode. Um, and then we're also going to cover all the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff with Space Venom or Space Knight Venom. We're going to cover all that in a single episode too. Um, and then we'll probably save Space Knight for either early next season 
or if we can squeeze it in before episode 600, I will, um, because I haven't read that yet, and I'm looking forward to reading that, because that's another thing I've heard mixed re uh, you know, reactions on and stuff. But uh, let me know your thoughts of this story, Talks and Returns. Let me know in the comments below. Oh, I should mention who the, uh, obviously Cullen Bunn was the writer, uh, but the artist on this one was uh, was Declan Shalvey, um, who I do like Declan's art, and I've seen Declan's art and other things, um, and on covers and stuff. So I do like Declan's art, and Declan was the one who drew these issues. So if you like the artwork when I flash it up at you, that was Declan Shalvey. So shout out to Declan. Um, so thank you all so much for watching this episode. As always, I really do appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Happy Talksgiving. Peace.